Good morning. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, asymmetric information as a market failure and the way that varying levels of information between market participants can create outcomes that are less efficient for society than we would prefer that they be. So um, asymmetric information is exactly what it sounds like. It's when two parties to a transaction do not have the same information about the good or service being traded. Um, and one of the tenets and hallmarks of a perfectly competitive market system is the idea that everyone has full information. Um, a market failure is basically the idea that the price mechanism is functioning properly and the price mechanism is allocating resources to the exact wishes and wants of private consumers and private producers. And that's what we actually see right here in our model. What we see is we have the marginal private cost of production here, the supply curve, and we have the marginal private benefit from consuming additional units of this good, or the demand curve. And this is creating a market equilibrium that satisfies the private interests of both the buyer and the seller, the demander and the supplier, in this particular marketplace. Asymmetric information enters the idea as a market failure when we have informed versus uninformed demand. All right, the classic examples of asymmetric information market failures are things like used cars. The seller of the used car has much more information about what has happened with that car over the course of time. The service history, has it been in an accident, has, have there been problems that have not had insurance claims filed, things along those uh, instance. And therefore, that information which is held by the seller means that the private cost and the social cost are pretty much exactly the same. Everything the seller knows about the car is the social cost and the private cost combined. The downside in that case is that the buyer of that car doesn't have all of that information. And the outcome of this is that this marginal private benefit curve under an asymmetric information problem, the marginal private benefit curve becomes, in essence, let me change that to make it right, uninformed demand. And so this uninformed demand, which we see here, isn't reflecting the best interest of either that individual buyer or society as a whole. And so, in the example of the used car, if that buyer were fully informed about what that car had problems with, what repairs it had, had it ever been in a flood, something along those lines, the informed demand might be in a much different place on this model than the uninformed demand. So in this particular case, society's best interest would be served by informed demand. Another example of this is like the cigarette issues of the 1950s and 60s and into the 70s. Um, the cigarette companies were well aware of the challenges and damages that cigarettes caused to people's lungs, the cancer-causing nature of it, but they never shared that information with the public. And so seven, the 74, 75% of adult Americans who were smokers in the 50s and 60s were consuming products for which they were wildly ill-informed about the negative influences that those products were having on them. And in essence, what we found in that cigarette example is that the marginal social benefit would have been far to the left of the marginal private benefit. And so this asymmetric information that existed in the market for cigarettes created a split demand curve where informed demand and uninformed demand created two different demand curves, all right? And our allocatively efficient quantity, in this case, would have been far 
less than our market quantity. And one of the ways, again, that we can show that this is a market failure is the price mechanism for this asymmetric information problem is setting our market quantity right here. At that market quantity, here is our marginal social benefit, here's our marginal social cost curve, and we can see that the marginal social cost exceeds the marginal social benefit in that case, and that is an indication that we are over allocating resources to this particular good, not necessarily because it's causing a problem as an externality, not necessarily for any reason other than people are simply ill-informed about the demand that they should have for this product. And what we find from society's perspective again is we find too many suppliers in the marketplace and again from society's perspective servicing too many demanders and we get this area of dead weight loss to society from this overconsumption due to incorrect information. There are a series of ways that you can solve this problem. Obviously the provision of information is the best way to solve an asymmetric information problem. That's why you might see um, health ratings on restaurants when you walk in the door. You look up, you see that they have a 58, you have information about what's going on in that restaurant and you might not want to eat there. You walk into a restaurant, they have a 99 as a health rating, you might be a little bit more comfortable hanging out in that restaurant and enjoying food there. And so the, the provision of information is generally the, the, the easiest way and the best way to create or limit asymmetric information problems. So there is asymmetric information as a market failure and how it can create deadweight loss and inefficiency. Thank you.